But here's the problem. Unlike the rest of the chicken, the wings are quite difficult to eat. All because chicken wings have two bones, but a rather small content of meat seems too much of a trouble. Maybe it's better to order legs. Turns out that you've been eating them the wrong way. Watch carefully. First, you need to take the wing with both hands and slightly twist it from side to side to feel the bones inside. Can you feel them? Now, gently pull it out on one side. It's easier than it sounds, right? Use this technique to get the second bone, and that'll do the trick. Now you only have the edible part, which you can dip in the sauce and eat without fear of accidentally choking on the bone. Feeling the urge to eat a couple of crispy wings? Okay, I get this completely, but if you don't like the bones that bad, just get bloody Chicken tenders. Nuggets. <laughs> Chicken nuggets. Chicken nuggets, yeah. not that deep. So I've seen that before, but the guy just took out one bone and then he held it and yeah. he just sucked it off. And I was like, that's what I was expecting. This is more like a chicken nugget. So. I don't like I don't like like boned meat. I like I like boneless chicken. <laughs> I will say it depends where. Like here in Toronto, we got a great wing place called Duff's. Best wings in the world, but you get boneless ones at like Buffalo Wild Wings. Yeah. Boom, it's a beauty. If you're watching this video, there's a pretty good chance you're alive and breathing <laughs> in some glorious air. But we're pretty sure the way you're breathing isn't the correct way. Is it there's not? actually a proper way to breathe, and it includes breathing from your abdomen instead of breathing from your chest. Taking in air from your chest will result in shallow <laughs> breath, that? anxiety, sweaty palms, and less oxygen intake. See, now I can't catch okay. my breath. Whenever I, okay. whenever I think about my breath, like now I'm getting sweaty hands because I can't, I'm thinking, I'm running out of breath now. I can't, I'm trying to, I'm trying to force my breath. And this I is can't. hurting my stomach. I have asthma. This is not safe for me. I'm not doing it. I'm feeling lightheaded now. I'm seeing black spots. I started running when I go on runs and I and I feel I can't catch my breath. I just go deep through the nose. But I have allergies, so my nose is booked for my like It feels bloat. like when you do that, you pass a certain threshold, like about here, and when you feel the air drop down to the abdomen, I feel like I catch my breath again. Okay, so he's just doing some therapeutic breathing. I can't do that because my nose is blocked most of the time because allergies. There's a reason why your food is always cold in the center after you remove it from the microwave. I hate that. The heat inside microwaves heats up the food well, on your the first problem is you're using a microwave. And by the time the buzzer I'm rings, not going to put it in the bloody the oven. That's too much time. Kenny! <laughs> to avoid this, all you have to do is spread your food out on your plate so that it circles around the outer edge. With the food equally distributed around the corners of the plate, it will all heat up evenly. And cold food will be a thing of the past. I know, but which crackhead is gonna like arrange it in so a donut and then it's put like, it in the thing? It's like people be like, that's a great idea. You know what? I'm gonna start doing that. I got an even better idea. Just put it in the oven normally. But that takes up too much time. I just wanna put it on a plate one minute in the, in the microwave. It takes too Ooh. much time, but you know what else takes a lot of time? Putting your food down and be like, all right, let me just <laughs> evenly put a big circle here to make sure it's evenly warm. <laughs> Wait, okay, do you use the cover in the microwave? The little like plate cover? No. Why am I the only one that does this? Well, do you guys again, use, like. I've stopped using it because it gains a clock. And it takes out all the nutrients, so I don't even go near a microwave anymore. There was a point that every little thing I heated up the microwave, and now I even come to work with a microwave and I eat my chicken cold. Oh, that's sad. What I do yesterday, I chicken schnitzel with rice, just ice cold. cold. Oh yeah. You're a crackhead. Am dude. I a crackhead? I mean, I can see some veins in my arms right now. They're looking pretty good. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to Top 10 Central. I'm one of your hosts, Eamon Hassan. I'm your other host, Jared Bronstein. Make sure you guys stick around until the end of the video for some bloopers. But for now, we gotta get ready to this one, so let's get to reacting. Nice. Seriously, just take a closer look at it. See the two blades? Turns out that you can use both sides of a knife to peel vegetables. This makes vegetable peeling much more effective. It saves time, as you don't need to make unnecessary movements. The video with this undoubtedly brilliant discovery was posted on Reddit and instantly went viral. Are you Even kidding me? I did not know that. Chefs for many years didn't know this secret. I what? think that's not the case. Why were we all played? Why did no one assume you could go back up? I've always peeled my carrots and I just go straight down. Yeah, I go straight down as well. So. I'm not peeling carrots though. I'm peeling apples. Why? Because of what I don't want to do it with a knife. It takes time. What if I cut myself? Safety first. And why peel an apple in the first place? You're so correct. <laughs> <laughs> I 
In short, it's quite reliable, though getting food out of it may not be that simple. It's so annoying. Especially when it's like it's small mm, and you're like trying to use chopsticks. Food. The flaps are getting in the way, and while you're struggling with the chopsticks, the food's getting cold. Mm. It seems very inconvenient, but there is a way to make things easier. As you probably noticed, these containers are prefabricated. That is, they are folded in a special way before putting food inside. Don't. That means you can unfold them. In fact, it is Take assumed that you will use the containers this way turning them into a disposable plate. It is a pity that hardly anyone knows about this. I did not know about this. I always put it in my own plate. Okay, but I will say, imagine you have three of them. It's like having three plates. It's going to take up a lot more room. I guess they could overlap though, it's right? It's like... Yeah, they could overlap. Oh my god, I didn't know this! Your entire life, you've probably been peeling bananas the wrong way. That's, you Most can't of us have been taught tell to me that. banana from the top, but this can be difficult, and it actually takes much yeah. longer than necessary. To peel bananas the correct way, all we have to do is gain a little bit of guidance from monkeys and other primates. I do this. They open the banana from the bottom, and the peel falls off like magic. Like magic. Don't believe us? Really? Just give it a yeah. try and find out I mean, usually with yourself. magic, it's oh, like yeah. magic are like things that you can't explain. It seems, no, it's literally magic. It seems quite clear as day to me that they're literally pulling it down with their fingers the same way I pull it from the top. No, I know, but some, magical about no, that. So, sometimes the stem is really hard on. Like, I will stuck say, on sometimes, yes, yeah, sometimes that happens, and then I just pull it, and rather than it splits the top, like halfway down the banana, I'll just split there, and I'm like, well, we're still here. See, I don't have those problems. I have a banana every single day for breakfast, you guys. From the bottom, bloop, bloop, the little seed comes out with it, and then, like, Bob's say, your uncle, you cut them into little slices. Very high in <laughs> potassium, so. Yeah. You didn't let me finish into my, cut them into little slices and then put them on your peanut butter toast. And you can add some like chocolate soy milk if you want. Or you just eat a banana. Or you can do it my way. <laughs> Breaking in new shoes. When you buy a new pair of shoes, the first thing you probably do is put them on. Well, no, you walk around in them for a few minutes to break them in. Breaking in a new pair of shoes oh. can take more than a few days for the material to become more flexible. But the easiest way to get your new shoes nice and loose as quickly as possible is to throw on a pair of thick socks. Put your shoes on your feet and use a hair dryer to blow hot air on the tight corners of the shoe. Like, keep repeating this process until your shoe fits comfortably. Keep repeating this process. Who has the time to do this? I'd rather just deal with the blisters and just be in a little bit of pain oh, for a couple it, days. It's and hard. You know what? One shoe that never opens up? Converse. I was going to say Converse. Oh, most uncomfortable shoe on the market. Well, they just don't. See, but that's the thing is they're like cloth, so they kind of form to your foot. They, they do stretch. No, they but don't. But they're like tight almost. They don't. Oh my so god. So it's an interesting I've, one I've there. I've worn mine so I will say, many times. Yeah, always the side of my, right here. Right? Mine's always the back. For me, it's always right here on the, on the, the, on the side? The pinky, the pinky toe. Oh, okay, okay. It's always like red and yeah, like, yeah. and I'm just like, why do I wear these shoes? <laughs> why am I like this? Fashion, Jared. I it's guess. not meant to be comfortable. It's meant to be nice. Ever thought about how irritating it is when the jelly squeezes out of your PB&J sandwich as you bite into it? No. If you have, there's a neat trick for you. How much jelly Spread are a thin people putting on their sandwiches? Peanut butter across <laughs> one of the slices of bread. Then add a second layer around the edges and do the same for the second slice. Put some this jelly in the center of the first psychotic. slice. Put the slices together and press them along the edges. Now the peanut butter won't let the jelly leak out, and you can safely sink your teeth in. So. Firstly, go ahead. let me go first. Firstly, that's way too much peanut butter. Secondly, how do you have that much jelly that is pouring over the sides? If you were me and know how to spread a toast perfectly, you wouldn't have this issue. So sucks to suck. It's all about the perfect ratio. Yeah, and it's that ain't it. It's a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, not a peanut butter sandwich with a little bit of jelly in the middle of it. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? There's a big difference there. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. We, we don't stand you at all. We're actually unimpressed. If anything, we're angry. When nature calls, you run to the bathroom and sit on the toilet to go number two. You probably That's haven't me right put about too now. much thought into the <laughs> position of your body while you're sitting on the toilet seat, right? Well, guess what? Squatty the way potty. most of us sit on the throne is all wrong. Know, Medical fun. research has is it gonna be legs squatting up, on the I think. toilet yeah. is more effective because it pushes up. the See? thighs <laughs> up against the stomach. Okay. The ankle of the body but acts as a natural laxative to move your poop over your bowels you do that? at you have one? speed. Those who squat okay, I don't have one, but my my sister does. I've used it. It doesn't promote total any more than you think. On the next so time you get the I will say, the my bathtub is in front of my toilet. Mm -hmm. There's like a very small gap there. Yeah. That sometimes I do put my legs up, and I find that more so than have an easier poo, I just doze off. <laughs> <laughs> Mid poo? Is it turn out or in? <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just joshing with you guys. Okay, I personally don't believe this one because this didn't make my not any easier. No, I think it's, uh, it could be a psychological, no, I don't think, it's, it's science though, dude. Ah, the age-old question. Why is bologna circular, but bread is square? 
This design flaw <laughs> leaves the corners of the bread completely mm. bare, which doesn't make for a very delicious bite. To please your inner perfectionist, cut two slices of bologna in half and put them with their cut sides outwards. Problem solved. Okay, I don't even have this problem still because I use uh, turkey and I just put it all over the bread, so I, I don't. I was gonna say I don't have a I don't have a I don't have a set like all right two pieces per sandwich. Yeah. I just slide that all over the place, man. Yeah, and I fill the toast. Yeah, I, I have I have some pretty pretty fat sandwiches, man. I'm not gonna lie. I'm a pretty good sandwich maker. I'm not even gonna lie to you. Like, like yeah, at some there's, point. there's a science behind it. You definitely yeah. do the, the half fold, yeah. and then you kind of just go down from the top. Yeah. Because the turkey's wider than the bread. Oh, of course. So if anything, the turkey actually comes over almost like the PB and J but sandwich. But it's nice that way, though. But it's so much better because yeah. then you don't have that whatever that animation of the guy biting the corner of just the bread. <laughs> That's just not bread. You never have that problem. If anything, you can just bite. A little turkey off the edge, you know? <laughs> and be like, ooh, what a treat. <laughs> yeah, you know, like, this is, I don't even get, I'm getting extra protein, it's healthy, and it tastes great. On top of this, I also got my sandwich. Win-win. <laughs> <laughs> we learn how to brush our teeth very early on in our lives, but many of us are brushing our pearly whites incorrectly. Brushing with a hard toothbrush will wear down your enamel and can hurt soft, your gums. Always so soft. stick to soft oh, and oh, brushes instead. Baby, baby. Then instead of moving the brush from side to side, you should tilt your toothbrush at a 45 degree angle and use short up and down strokes. Brushing your teeth and gums in this motion is the best way to remove <laughs> Okay, I thought everybody knew this. So my dentist told me uh, the idea is, yeah, you almost want to like hook it out because you want to yeah. get, you want to get in there. Yeah, to almost get under like the plaque up. and stuff. Yeah, yeah. But I have an electric, so. Uh, when I was in primary school, they'd they'd get dentists to come and like with a big mouth and show us how to brush our teeth, and they did this every year. So uh, I just assumed everyone got taught how to do that. I don't know if I ever had that. Sometimes we get dentists come to the school. Um, but I don't know. I, they were extra. You know how it is. I don't know. <laughs> Cherry tomatoes are small, so you need a lot of them to make almost any meal. That's why cutting all of them in half is a long and tedious task. You can make it much faster. Get the slap chop. Just take two <laughs> plates, put the tomatoes between them. I've heard this doesn't work. Tomatoes in like it does, but like then it can. Cut them all in half and accidents. With knife <laughs> make sure the knife is sharp enough, or you'll end up with tomato mush instead. I don't like cherry tomatoes, so... I feel like that's just a harder... Like, it's just so much effort. No, but if you get the slice right, all of them are done. You know what I mean? Yeah, if you get it, yeah. And the most tedious part of cooking is cutting the vegetables and everything like that. I hate cutting I don't cook too often, but there's something soothing about that. There's something soothing about, like, the, 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 like, the, the, when you're just, like, you have, like, an onion, and you're just, like, you know I, what I mean? I don't, I, I can't cut it like that, though. Like, how the chefs do it all fast, like, yeah. I can't do it. It's like... Oh. Bro. I learned from Gordon Ramsay's tutorial. I was gonna that say, helps. you gotta look up my boy Gordon. I did. It's a peel, and this seed inside. But don't worry. In fact, it's not as complicated as it seems at first glance. All you need is a table, a knife, and a glass. Cut the fruit into two parts as close to the seed as possible. Then, take the piece without the seed. Take the glass, place it on the table, and pry off the flesh with the edge. Now, just peel it inside the glass. If the mango's ripe enough, there's no problem. Then Repeat the same procedure with the second parts of the fruit, removing the seed first. In fact, you can peel many soft fruits this way. For example, kiwis, though you might need something smaller than a glass. A spoon will do. What? I do not understand what I just watched. Like, I was trying to retain the information and I still have no idea what I just I saw. I don't understand why you'd peel a mango like that. Dude, literally cut both sides, then cut around the seed, then have it. Just throw the seed away. Why? Why is there so much? I mean, yeah, it's like an apple. You just eat it, and then the middle part, yeah. of the core, you kind of just. There's so you know? like yeah. There's just no need for that. Yeah. We all stubbornly use our fingers to crack pistachios, yep. and it mm -hmm. becomes a real pain in the nails after a while. Mm -hmm. To save your fingertips, just use a pistachio shell for the rest of the nuts. It does the trick neatly. And this is why? this is incredibly flawed because where that first pistachio shell come from? Your thumb. Oh, you used your fingers. Okay, but ignore that one. But sometimes the shells aren't soft. Sometimes they're really stuck on there, and I'm like, dude, I can't open this. Sometimes there's like barely even an opening, yeah. and you, I give up. Other times I go for the challenge. <laughs> Other times I try to get it, and when you do, it feels great, and when you don't, and you break off like the top piece of it, and then it gets under your nail, and it, like yeah. it hurts a lot. You're like, oh, I do this. I <laughs> There's one there that's like such an easy one to open. Why do I, I do this to myself? myself. Like literally. <laughs> then for like a couple days, it just hurts under your nail anyways. I'm sorry, Jared. It's fine. It's healed by now. <laughs> it's been three years. <laughs> Still got the scar. Instead of sinking your teeth right into that creamy delight and getting the icing all over your face, cut the lower half of a cupcake and put it on the top. 
Kind of like you're making a little cupcake sandwich. No more icing mustaches. But then, even if you pressed it like that and bit into it, the icing would still come out the sides. And, and that's why what you guys have to do is when you have a cupcake, you actually put a hole in the middle of the cupcake, just like the peanut butter and jelly sandwich, and then you put the icing in the middle of the cupcake. <laughs> <laughs> and that way it can't go anywhere. No, okay, I would. <laughs> I'd eat half the icing and then just bite the cupcake. Again, guys, I've, I was, I mean, you might say unfortunate, I say it's fortunate. I have a very big mouth, so I'm just the kind of person that I can just literally like. I have a big mouth too, but some like cupcakes are massive. If you've ever been to McDonald's and eaten their famous McFlurry like spoon, ice cream, think, right? you've probably noticed yeah, something strange. It, I mean, a spoon it's has a really weird a straw. design. It's thick, hollow, and has a square shape. Someone must have tried to suck the ice cream out of it like a straw, <laughs> but it's not an easy task as the yeah. ice cream hadn't melted, mainly because I the spoon like that, was though. intended for something quite different. And now it's not square because an ordinary plastic spoon would sink in the ice cream, and its thickness is not for protection from the cold, and it's unlikely likely that anyone really feels more comfortable holding a square pen in their hand. Everything is much simpler. The answer lies in how the dessert is prepared. First, they put the ice cream in the cup, then add a mix in, stick a spoon in it, but all this still needs to be mixed up. And that's where the strange spoon shape comes to the rescue. But they do this in front of you, you know this is why it's used, but also the ice cream machine never works, so why am I being shown this? I mean, there's that, but there's also something called a whisk. So the fact that a, a multi-billion dollar company like McDonald's <laughs> still hasn't figured out that you go to the dollar store and buy a little metal thing, they just go like that with your hand? I know, but you're, not gonna, me. <laughs> you're not gonna do that for every McFlurry. No, instead, just waste all the plastic. <laughs> True, he, he's got a point. Oh, question, which McFlurry do you like? Uh, none of them. Oreo. Oreo fan. <laughs> I mean, the Oreo one is good. I mean, they're all good, but I don't, again, guys, I'm not like a big sweets guy, you know? I'm saying if you had to choose. Well, I mean, they have like the Shamrock Shake around, you know, St. Patrick's Day, okay. the green one, which looks like Shrek's vomit. So okay. I usually stay clear of that one. <laughs> um, but yeah, Oreo is probably the best one. Because I mean, it's you. simple, right? Who doesn't like Oreos? Simple but deadly. I've been your host for this one, Eamon Hassan. I'm Jared Bronson. Make sure you guys smash that like button and stick around for these little bloopers. Woo! Bye! <laughs> Oh, that was a nice leg stretch. You know, you get the, just, you get the, the, the hammies stretched. You know what I'm talking about? You yeah. just keep your legs straight and just go I straight back, like right, rows, right down bro. the back of the legs. That feels like a rubber band that has not been opened yet. Oh. Okay, let's close it back up. <laughs> let's close it. <laughs> okay. Tight like a tiger. Tight like a tiger. What's that from? Tight like a tiger. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you guys. <laughs> My God! <laughs> I thought you were gonna take it over. Again? Okay. Oh, know. okay. Guys, I'm really hungry. I'm gonna cry. I'm crying. My blooper story. <laughs> Hate it.